<clears throat> hey, are you guys shocked? If I ever do a face reveal on this channel, you'll be even more shocked because I do not look like this little avatar anymore. But the reason I'm doing a voice reveal is because I recently bought a microphone, finally. A lot of you guys have been asking me to do voiceover in my video since I started my channel, but I just never did because I'm shy. Actually, I'm not shy, not me, but I think it'll be really awkward editing this, so I'm kind of nervous about it, but if I don't like it, I just won't post it. But if I do like it, hey, I'm Emmy, little Emmy's art. And by the title in the background, you can tell what I'm going to be doing already. I'm going to rank every single Monster High character that's ever existed. And the reason is because the channel recently hit 2,000 subscribers, and that's all thanks to my Monster High videos that got really popular, and all you guys for watching them. So thank you for watching, and thank you Monster High for existing. And I think doing a voiceover will be way easier than doing my like wall of text that I usually do. That's a lot of reading. So yeah, that's kind of it. Let's just get started. No more talking. It's kind of embarrassing. Okay, so the first thing I did already was change the names of the categories. So first, I have I would live for this character. And this is top tier characters that I love. I would live for them. I did put I would die for them, but it's monster high. So technically, they're already dead, some of the monsters. So I would live for you. Then we have Fantastic. This is like characters I love. They're not my favorites, but I still love them. They're still classic. Then I have, I would say hi in the hallways to you, you know, not quite BFFs, don't really love this character, but they're still pretty cute. Then I have, um, who are you again? Kind of characters, background characters, I forgot existed, characters I don't really think about, don't really care about. What do I think of her? Yes. I don't think of her. Then lastly, I have Monster High Dropout, which is kind of self-explanatory, just characters that I don't like. I I think they're lame, they're kind of losers, they would fail Monster High, not really important, why do they exist? I'm kind of going in on them, but you know, they're just kind of like the worst characters in my opinion. By the way, the way I'm going to be ranking my characters is not according to any like set of rules or anything, I'm just going to be doing it based off my personal opinion, and with all that blah blah out of the way, let me just get started. Okay, so I went ahead and just pre-organized them really fast. I put some of the more boring ones in the front because I know you guys just want to see all these down here. So we're going to start out with some of the most boring characters in my opinion, which are the humans. <laughs> I know why they added the humans to the movies and stuff to be like the villains in the story, but I just don't really care about them at all. Everybody just cares about the monsters and the humans are all super boring anyways. Okay, so starting off with this girl, her name is Lilith Van Hellscream. And she's the granddaughter, I think, of Van Hellscream. I don't remember which movie they're in. But Van Hellscream, if you don't know, he's like a monster hunter and he hates the monsters. But she goes to the normie high school and Lilith rallies up all the other humans to be mean to the monsters and she's the main villain of that story. Design-wise, I actually kind of like her outfit. I like her victory rolls, how she has like a vintage look. Her cheetah is kind of tacky, but it fits her character. But she's a human, so obviously she can't even go to Monster High. And she's really mean, so I'm gonna have to drop her out. Next, we have this man. I don't remember his name either, but he's from the same movie. But his name is something like super boring Tad or Chad or Brad. Some basic bland human name. No, no, I'm I'm not not and you could have did it. See, I get I it you never. And he's not necessarily a villain. He's just kind of. I think he has a little romance with Frankie, or he develops a friendship with Frankie. But he's one of the humans that's actually nice to the monsters. I think they invite them to the dance because they think the monster ghouls are like in costumes. But again, he's just really boring. I don't really care about him at all. His design is also lame. It's just a green shirt and like khakis or something so he can't attend monster high either i'm gonna have to drop him out even though he's nice next we have these two they're humans they're also villains they're kind of like they're kind of like lilith's little puppets that she controls but i don't care about them plus they're humans so they're getting dropped out next here we have a cop which is kind of weird to have in the monster high universe just a police officer <laughs> 
and he's anti-monsters, I think he tries to run the monsters out of town. And for that reason alone, I don't remember if he gets redeemed either like the rest of them. But no, he's just getting dropped out immediately. Up here next we have Claire, she's also from Ghoul's Rule. But I do know that she's kind of popular among the Monster High fans. Just cause she's goth, she kind of looks like she could go to Monster High. She's not any sort of monster, she's just a regular human. But she's one of the humans that's actually nice to the ghouls. She tries to help them, along with Mr. Bland over here. And I do like her design, I'm not gonna lie, it's pretty basic. But she is kind of gothy alternative, which is way better than like these that just are wearing like a shirt and jeans. But she's just a human, and I don't know, I don't like her as much as other people do. I'm gonna have to drop her out of Monster High. I would say hi to her in the hallways, because she is a pretty nice girl. And even though I made up these rules, I'm dropping her out. Okay, so up next we have some of the little characters from the reboot movies. And honestly, I'm not really a fan of these kind of like, non-humanoid characters. Like, these are skeletons. This is a skeleton! This is bones! Which technically are humans. Just dead. I think it's cool that they're included to show that there's just not like humanoid monsters that go to Monster High, it's all different sorts of monsters. But I think they're just boring in my opinion, they're just backgrounders. These guys though, these two in the very front, they're from the reboot, I know that. I don't know either of their names, and their designs are pretty cute, so I would say hi to him. I would be friends with him. Same goes for this guy. These are kind of the monsters I was talking about that I don't really have any thoughts on. Like this, I don't know what it's supposed to be, like an ice sprite or something. No offense, but what would this little person even be doing at Monster High? They look more like a little creature. You know Bibble, her little floating fuzzy whatever that thing is? <laughs> this little guy reminds me of that. I wouldn't drop them out of Monster High. Actually, yes I would. Sorry. <laughs> Next we have this little green guy. Also, I have no idea what it's supposed to be, like a little goblin or something, but it reminds me of Slimer from the Ghostbusters. I'm gonna drop you out of Monster High. Next we have this creature, whatever it is. I literally have no idea what kind of monster this is supposed to be, kind of like a yeti or something. I don't know if this is mean to say, it kind of defeats the purpose of Monster High, which is like, we include everyone. Like this just looks more like an animal to me than like a monster that needs to go to school. But maybe she does need school and she's just trying to mind her business and I'm bullying her right now. But I'm gonna drop her out of Monster High because I just can't imagine like a monster like this sitting in a chair. So up here next, I don't know who this is honestly. But based on the art style that it's in, it's like the newer 3D renderings of the reboot movies. I think this is literally the definition of um who are you again? If I saw him walking down the halls, I would not recognize this man. Sorry to this man. I hate to say it, I hope I don't sound ridiculous. I don't know who this man is. I mean, he could be walking down the street. I wouldn't, I wouldn't know a thing. Sorry to this man. So that's where I'm gonna put him. Up next, we have this little zombie guy. From the art style, you can tell he's from the earlier webisodes of Monster High. But I remember him, I think he's from this one episode where him and Slow Mo are trying to fight over Gulia because they both have a crush on him. I mean, on her. But I don't know, I've always liked the zombies in Monster High, especially how they have their own language that only certain people can understand. I would say hi to him in the hallways. Okay, up next we have this vampire man, but based on his outfit, it's black and red, which I think is the color of the uniforms of the Vampire Academy, which is like a rivaling school to Monster High, which is vampires only. I'ma drop him out of Monster High. Up next, this looks like the exact same person. <laughs> I think based on the black and red, again, he might be from the Vampire Academy. If I'm correct, he might be from this one special webisode. Something happens in that webisode and then the vampires from the Vampire Academy try to recruit all the vampires from Monster High and then the werewolves do the same thing. They try to recruit all the werewolves from Monster High. So he seems pretty villainous. Even his eyebrows. <laughs> he has a permanent angry expression. He seems like kind of a jerk. Again, if he's a villain and he doesn't want to come to Monster High, he just wants to cause trouble. I'm gonna have to drop him out. Up next, we have another guy. He just looks like the werewolf version of the vampire that I just mentioned. I don't remember if they're supposed to be villains, so I might be wrong also. But since I have no clue if this guy's a good guy or a villain, I'm gonna have to drop him out of Monster High. 
Now here we have some of the werewolves I was talking about. He's from the same webisode. Even though he kind of plays a villainous role in that, I'm gonna put him in Um Who Are You Again. Up next we have another werewolf character. I don't know if they're supposed to be villains or not. That's what's kind of keeping me from putting them all in Monster High Dropout. But I don't know. I think his curl is just winning me over. There's something about it. So I'm gonna put him in Um Who Are You Again. Up next, we have a character who seems to be a Sasquatch. I'm gonna put him in Um, Who Are You Again? Because I just literally do not know who this is. <laughs> Up next, we have a ghost character. If I'm gonna be honest, all the past background characters that we've discussed, all the boys at least, they all have the exact same design, which is just pulled back hair, a different color leather jacket, and thick eyebrows. So I'm gonna put him in Um, Who Are You Again? Okay, up next we have these two, who are gargoyles, and I know they're supposed to be villains. They're from the roller derby team, and they try to like seriously injure the other monsters. <laughs> like I'm not just saying they're mean and like they tease the other girls. They put spikes on the roller skates and they try to run them off the track and get them seriously like hurt or killed. So for that reason, I don't think they'd even be allowed on the Monster High premises. Y'all are going to jail! Period! Okay, up next we have this little girl, or ghoul I should say but she's from the 13 Wishes movie, and she's actually the one of the original ghouls that found Gigi's magic lamp, but she's just, I think, in the beginning scene of that movie, but I don't really care because I think her design is super cute. She's like a fawn or a deer girl. She has like a whole desert aesthetic, and I just think it's really cute. She kind of reminds me of Fauna from Animal Crossing, even though I don't really know anything about this character besides her history with the lamp. I think it's pretty fantastic, especially for just being a background character for the intro scene. So I think I'm gonna put her in the fantastic category because I really like her. Okay, up next, this might be cheating a little bit, but I put all the teachers together. Some of them, I'm not really sure if they're teachers or not. I know for sure these are, and I don't really have anything to say about them. But I do think it would have been cool if we had ever gotten like a five pack of dolls or something that included just the teachers to use with like the school play sets. I thought that would have been pretty nice. I would put them in Um Who Are You Again because I don't really remember any of them. But so they don't fail me and drop me out of Monster High, I'm going to put most of them in I Would Say Hi in the Hallways just to be polite. Actually pause, I think Miss Cabbage right here, she's a villain and they like freeze her or something. I'm dropping out of Monster High, I'm not putting her with all the other people. Okay, I lied. I put the teachers that I know are for sure teachers up here in the I would say hi in the hallways. But for these three remainders, I don't know who they are. I'm gonna put them in Who Are You Again? Okay, up next we have this little goblin man. But I know for sure he is in a movie. And he's like the henchman of one of the villains or something. But I'm gonna put him in Who Are You Again? Because I don't know who this is or what this is. I organized the next few characters to be the villains of the series. So we're just gonna have a whole bunch of bad guys coming up. And to start off, right here we have Van Hellscream. Which if you remember earlier, this is the father or grandfather. I don't remember. I should probably look it up. Okay, I was wrong. <laughs> He's the uncle of Lilith Van Hellscream, and he's the famous monster hunter that they warn all the other monsters about. If you can't tell by his name, he's a monster hunter, and he hates monsters. He doesn't think they should ever mix with the humans, so I have no choice but to drop him out of Monster High, and I do not feel bad about it at all. Okay, up next, we have Donatella Ghostier, and she's from Scare City of Frights, which is Claudine's movie. And if you don't know, she's supposed to be like a parody of Donatella Versace, and she's a famous fashion designer, but it turns out that she just steals her prodigy's ideas, which is what she plans to do to Claudine. She plans to lock her up and steal all her designs and just claim that they're hers. And even though she is a really bad guy and she's a villain, I think her design is so cool. She's a ghost and she has like a long black dress that dissipates into like wisps at the very bottom. But I also think her hair is really cool. It's like, it looks like a cornucopia. And even though she wanted to imprison one of the main ghouls forever and suck out her life force, she's still pretty fantastic in my opinion. Okay, so her name is Principal Revenant and she's the principal of the Ghost Worlds High School. She's from the movie Haunted, which is Spectra's character movie. And she's a villain in that movie. I didn't put her with the teachers because she's specifically supposed to be a villain. And she kind of is super mean to all the other ghosts in the ghost dimension. She gives them chains, which are a form of punishment in the ghost dimension. I won't give away the twist why she does it. And in the end, her character kind of takes a better turn. And I like the decision she makes in the end. That might have spoiled the movie for you. <laughs> The way her character ends up is pretty fantastic, and it's pretty sweet, so I'm gonna put her in fantastic. 
Okay, so up next we have Gory Fangtail, which is a fan favorite character of Monster High. She is a villain, so that's why she's bunched in with the other villains. I don't think we ever got a doll of her, but she is a recurring villain in the series. And if you're an OG Monster High fan, you remember back in the day there was such a demand for this character to be made into a doll. I remember going on the internet when I was like 10 and seeing so many custom dolls of her that were made using Draculaura dolls or like the Create a Monster Vampire. And I used to believe they were real <laughs> because they were really good and I was like oh I guess they are releasing this as a character but the, I don't think they ever did but she's always been a fan favorite and her bob haircut is kind of iconic you know that I'm known for the bob. so I'm gonna put her in fantastic okay so up next here we have Ramsey's denial I believe that this is and if you don't know who that is that's Cleo's dad and similar to what I said about the teachers, I do think it would have been cool if we ever got like a five pack of parents or something. We did get a lot of dolls of the parent. I think we did get Rebecca's dad, Draculaura's dad, but I'm gonna have to drop him out of Monster High. <laughs> Up next, we have Hexakaya's theme, which is Rebecca's dad, but his doll is pretty cool. He has like this retro vintage steampunk vibe. It goes along with Rebecca perfectly and it makes sense why she has that influence also on her design. And I think it's cool. I like his giant mustache. He kind of reminds me of the Pringles man. <laughs> and she created Rebecca, which is one of my favorite characters. But I do think he's pretty fantastic. Okay, up next is Dracula's dad, aka Dracula. Dun dun dun. And he is from the reboot, which nobody liked. And if you don't know the story of the reboot, instead of Monster High being like an ancient school of monsters that's been around for hundreds and hundreds of years, basically, Draculaura and her dad, they transform their house into Monster High. And it takes away from like the lore of Monster High and the hundreds and hundreds of years of monster history in those halls. And it takes away the mystery. I think it makes it super lame. But if we're speaking about Dracula's dad specifically, I think he's pretty cool. But he's just like a bumbling fool. He kind of reminds me of like Jimmy Neutron's dad. But he has good intentions and I think his design is pretty cool. I like his glasses. He just seems like a loving father. And in the original Monster High, Dracula is actually adopted because she was a human who died and became a vampire. I'm not sure if that's the same story in the reboot. I don't remember or if like he's literally Dracula's biological father. We did get a doll of him which was questionable but I don't hate this character. I know other people really do hate the reboot. But I think Dracula, I could see him in the old Monster High. I think he would just fit right in. I wouldn't even question it. So I'm going to put him in Fantastic. Okay, up next right here, we have Claudine's mom. She's also from the reboot. And as I said, a lot of people hated the reboot, but I kind of do like the parents. And Claudine's mom, she's pretty cute, but I think she looks like a really sweet mom. And I like her hair. It's kind of like a little pixie cut, which is super cute. And for that reason, I think she's kind of Fantastic. Okay, up next we have Victor Frankenstein, and he is Frankie's grandfather, if you could believe that. Technically, because he is the scientist that created Frankenstein's monster, which is Frankie's dad, and her dad and her mom made Frankie. And I don't remember anything about his personality either, he's just like a mad scientist, he's really wacky, but he's responsible for creating one of the most iconic Monster High characters of all time. I don't necessarily think he's fantastic, but I think I have no choice but to put him there. Okay, up next we have Laguna's dad, and he makes his first appearance in Great Scarier Reef, which is Laguna's movie. The one where they all turn into mermaids so they could have an excuse to make a whole bunch of cool mermaid dolls. And no offense, but I think he's kind of scary, but he seems to be a good dad to Laguna. I'm just gonna put him in fantastic with all the other parents. Okay, up next we have this ghoul. Yeah, she's a mummy and she's a mother of, what's his name? I don't remember his name, but the dancing guy from Boo York, Boo York. I don't really remember much about that movie. It's one of the movies I just didn't really care about. So it was kind of boring, but her design is pretty cool. She kind of has the same silhouette as Donatella, which is just like tall, skinny woman with a big head. Even though I love her design, I'm going to put her in Um, Who Are You Again? Okay, now that we got all of these kind of lame characters out of the way, here come more of the interesting and spicier opinions. And we're going to start off really controversial with Ari Hauntington and she is a character from the reboot if you don't know her story is that she's a singer I think her name is Tish or Tash but basically her story is that she's a ghost girl and she's one of the most famous singers in the human world and the monster world loves her too but they don't know that she's a monster but eventually she comes out as a monster and she joins Monster High I think she's supposed to be based off Hannah Montana but now that I think about it I think she's more based on Ariana Grande because she's a famous singer and her name is Ari if that wasn't obvious the reason I 
do not like this character is basically just because she was only invented to get rid of Spectra and to be her replacement. And if you couldn't tell by her design, she's basically just a Spectra ripoff. She's a white ghost with purple hair and a purple dress. The only difference is that she's kind of more friendlier and bubblier, where Spectra was kind of more like a gossip girl. If you know anything about like the Monster High lore, I think Spectra is way more of an interesting character, especially after she got her own solo movie with Haunted. That expanded a lot on her character and Ari just does not compare and you just simply cannot compete where you do not compare and Spectra is obviously the more interesting character, the better character in my opinion, objectively. And besides Ari's design being super boring, she's just like a little Spectra wannabe. It took me a while to realize that, that you wanted to be me. And I don't know why they did this, which was so weird, but for some reason, I think they got rid of Ghoulia in the core main ghouls, and they tried to replace her with Ari, which makes no sense at all. This was her debut to the public, the Monster High reboot, and it's just weird because we have the same other four characters. We have Cleo, Laguna, Frankie, Draculaura, and Cleo, and I just really don't like this character. The only nice thing I have to say about her is I kind of like the story, her being a ghost, secretly pretending to be a human, that gives some more depth to her character but everything else about her character is just kind of lame. They couldn't even give her an original color palette, they had to jack Spectra's, especially since Spectra was a fan favorite character of Monster High, so that's just kind of like a slap to the face of Monster High fans. I think her dolls were also really underwhelming, she got a lot of like the budget dolls from the reboot, which is basically just like the dolls that can't bend their arms or legs. I feel like I just bullied Ari for like 5 minutes straight, but I just really do not like this character. And for that long list of reasons that I just gave, I am going to have to drop her out of Monster High. Hopefully she has better luck in her singing career. Okay, up next we have Monica Decay, and just like Ari, she is also a replacement for Gulia, and she's the main villain of the reboot movies that we got. She kind of replaces Torlai also in that way, she becomes the new villain for the ghouls, and her whole thing is that she's kind of sick and tired of running from the humans and be mean to them the way the humans have done to the monsters. And some interesting facts about her is that she's one of the only zombies, I think the only zombie that actually speaks English in the Monster High world and not a zombie language, but she's also one of the last characters to be designed by the original Monster High character designers. I'm not sure specifically who, but I'm pretty sure that's true. And I think that's why I like this character's design so much, it, she seems like she could fit in the original Monster High run. Pre-reboot Monster High, she could have fit perfectly in that world. And I actually really like her design. I think her lilac hair with the green streak is just really pretty. And I also like her whole color palette, the green and the pink. I just think it's really beautiful. I think it would have been a bit better if she had more of like the old Monster High style and not really the childish big eyes that make her look a bit nicer. I don't think I would live for this character and I feel kind of bad putting a reboot character as the first character to fill that tier. But I do like her design a lot and I think her personality is pretty interesting too. Usually we have other types of monsters being the villains in Monster High, and I think I'm gonna have to put her in the Fantastic category. Okay, up next, we have another reboot character. I kind of bunched up a bunch of the reboot characters, but here we have Teresa Thornwillow, and I don't know what kind of monster she's supposed to be. She's kind of just like a tree girl. She reminds me a bit of Cedar Woods from Ever After High, but less cool. I'm just gonna spoil my opinion now. I do not like this character, and the reason is, first of all, because I do not know what kind of monster she's supposed to be, and second of all, her doll is one of those gimmicky dolls that isn't really supposed to be a fashion doll, but she's supposed to appeal to like younger audiences. And I know it's annoying when adults criticize children's toys for being too childish since they are for children, but I think companies really underestimate children and their thoughts and opinions because Monster High came out when I was 10 years old and even back then I did not like gimmicky toys like this. Basically when the reboot happened, they stopped caring about like the actual monsters designs and their outfits and all of that. They really went cheap. They just cared more about making sales so they started making a whole bunch of like gimmick dolls like Barbie has where they have transforming dolls, plastic clothing, they all come with some weird clip on hair, and just lame things like that, which was a huge drop in quality from the original Monster High, where they had so many points of articulation, everything was removable, their designs were really thought out and executed well, they were really high quality dolls, and that's why Monster High was really revolutionary. But dolls like this, Teresa, she had like a growing gimmick, which is really lame, it's something I think of with like Barbie or Disney dolls, which are just like the babyfication of fashion dolls, and that's not why a lot of people liked Monster High. They didn't care about the gimmicks, they cared about the characters. And I think I just rambled a lot, but I think characters like this that are just made to have a gimmick to them
them and no really personality or purpose are really lame. So I'm gonna drop her out of Monster High. Okay, so up next we have this little ghoul and I had to look up her name. Her name is Olivia Stein, but it's spelt like alive. Olivia alive because she is another Frankenstein daughter. She's supposed to be Frankie's little sister and she's also from the Monster High reboot. But one thing I do not like along with gimmick dolls is sibling dolls. I know there's been a lot of siblings in the past of Monster High, but I think those are more acceptable because they're like tweens and they're allowed to go to Monster High. Olivia, I think she's supposed to be like elementary school age, which is just like, why was she even created in the first place? I don't know why they felt the need to give Frankie Stein a little sister. Also, her design is really boring and lame. She's just like mini Frankie. I think characters like this are just super lame and unnecessary, especially for a character like Frankie who was created. Her whole thing is that she is alone in the world and this is her first time around, so she's kind of figuring everything out. And giving her a little sister just kind of defeats the purpose of that. It's just like another Frankie. So I'm gonna have to drop her out of Monster High. Maybe she can go to like Monster Elementary or something. Up next, we have this little bat girl. But I do think, again, she's supposed to be Draculaura's little sister from the reboot. Like, why did Draculaura need a little sister? She didn't. Just like Claudine's brothers, they're not on this list, thank goodness. But once again, I kind of just went over how I feel about little sibling characters with Frankie. So I'm gonna to drop her out of Monster High as well. Okay, up next is another reboot character, Sylvie Timberwolf, and I literally have nothing to say about this character. I cannot think of anything interesting to say. I think she only makes an appearance in Electrified. She's in like the opening sequence or something. She's getting chased by humans. I don't even think she has a speaking role in the movie. I don't remember if she speaks at all. The only thing I can say is that she kind of has some potential as a character. In the movie, she tries to join a rock band with like some of the other monsters. And I think it would have been more interesting if they gave her design kind of more of a punk vibe than whatever they gave her officially. I don't really think they gave her anything at all, which is pretty bland and boring. I don't necessarily think I would drop her out of Monster High just because I I do think she has potential, but again, she's just kind of there. She doesn't really serve any purpose, but I'm gonna put her in Um, Who Are You again? Okay, so up next is Dana Treasurer Jones. I think that's how you pronounce it. She's supposed to be the daughter of Davy Jones, and I don't really know what kind of monster he's supposed to be, and I don't really know what kind of monster she's supposed to be in Monster High either, if she's a ghost or anything. But her doll, basically, she just has like pearly golden skin and golden hair, and honestly, it's pretty boring. She's another gimmick doll. Her dress can like transform, so it's like two dresses in one, but I think she's one of those dolls that has like plastic clothing instead of real removable clothes, and I think it's overall pretty pretty lame. I think her character art here is just really cute, but I don't really know why she exists, but she's basically from that doll line where they just tried to redo Skull Shores. I would say she has potential, but I don't really know where they could take her character. I'm debating on putting her in Um, Who Are You Again and Monster High Dropout, but I think I'm gonna have to drop her out just because I have more negative things to say about her than positive. Okay, up next, I have no clue who this is at all. I was gonna say this is Teresa Thornwillow, but we already did Teresa Thornwillow. She looks like the exact same character design. I'm not even gonna bother. I'm just gonna drop her out. That could have been like somebody's fan favorite character and I have no idea who this is. <laughs> okay, so up next, I bunched up some of the ghouls from Boo York, Boo York. And if you remember from earlier, this is one of the doll lines I don't really care about. I don't necessarily hate it. They're just kind of bland to me. They're just kind of meh. I guess they're kind of interesting, but I just don't remember much about them. But to start off, here we have... Okay, I just looked him up and his name is Seth Ptolemy, which I did not remember at all. But he's like the dancing, singing, performing mummy from Monster High, Boo York, Boo York. And that is a musical, so everybody was singing and dancing in that movie. But like, in the actual narrative of the story, he wants to be a singer and a dancer and he's really good at it. But his parents want him to like, take over the mummy family throne or whatever. And his mother we ranked earlier. And I don't remember much about his personality, I do remember he was pretty nice, but his design is pretty cool. I do not like his 80s pants. He has MC Hammer pants, which are really ugly in my opinion, but I would say hi in the halls of Monster High. Okay, up next from Boo York, Boo York also, we have Astronova, and this character is really weird in my memory. I just remember thinking, oh wow, like they're doing aliens now when they first announced that they're having an alien character in Monster High, but she's not really what I expected at all. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing still to this day. Her design is pretty okay. I know there was two variants of her. There was like the purple skin variant and the lilac skin variant, and I do think the darker version is prettier, but there's just one really weird thing about her doll. If you remember earlier, I said, 
I do not like gimmick dolls. And she was a gimmick doll. Her whole thing is that she came with like a display base. She has like a magnet in her head. So when you put her in the display base, she like floats. There's a little gap of space. But the doll had this weird thing where like her head had to be flat at the top in order for the magnet to work. I don't think her headpiece was removable, which was another lame thing. But I do think her crystal design is pretty neat. And she was supposed to be responsible for the crossover between Monster High and Ever After High that never happened. As an alien character, I do think she's kind of disappointing for Monster High. She's not terrible, so I think I'm gonna have to greet her in the hallways whenever she floats by. Okay, next we have Luna Matthews, and I just want to say really quick, Starry, if Boo York, Boo York is your favorite doll line or favorite Monster High movie, for some reason, I just don't have good memories with that movie. Even right now, I don't really care about it. I have no urge to rewatch it out of all the Monster High movies, that's the one. I watched once, I could barely pay attention throughout it, and I don't think I'll ever rewatch it again. And I feel bad because the character designs really aren't that bad, but it's just that that weird memory that I have with the movie kind of impacts the way I feel about the characters. Just like Luna Matthews, her design is not that bad. She's a moth girl and she's kind of cute, but I do not have any strong opinions about her. I'm trying really hard to think of something else nice to say, but I just literally cannot. My mind is blank. So for now, I'm gonna put her in um, who are you again? Maybe I should rewatch Boo York Boo York and my opinion will change on these characters. But for now, I have nothing to say. <laughs> Anyways, moving on, here we have Mouse Eaties King. And I know I said I didn't really remember much about Boo York Boo York, but I do think this doll is pretty cute. I don't really know what kind of monster she's supposed to be. She's daughter of the Rat King, and I have no idea what that means. I didn't know rats were considered monsters, but I guess she's like a were rat or something. I really like her giant ears and how they made her doll extra short. And even though I don't really like Boo York Boo York, I do think I would say hi to her in the hallway. She seems like a friendly character. And that's where my mind is telling me to put her right now in this moment. So that's what I'm going to do. Even though I just said I did not really care for Boo York Boo York, I keep repeating that. I do remember liking LED. I think she's really cute. She's another robot character. The second robot character after Rebecca. She's kind of like an android more than a robot. She's really futuristic. I think her design is really cute. And in Boo York Boo York, she's supposed to be like a DJ. She uses like holograms to do her DJing on. Her doll sculpt is also really cool too. She has like a whole bunch of paneling. I also think her name is really funny. It's LED, like LED lights because she's a robot. And out of all the Boo York Boo York dolls that came in that line, I actually really like her core design. I like her gown with like the metallic on top of it and the cape. She has the honor of being the only character I think is fantastic. Okay, so up next, we have a few of the characters from Great Scarier Reef. And honestly, I didn't really like that movie, but I did really like the dolls that came with that line, especially the new characters. Okay, so we're gonna start off with Calamari. And I actually really like this character. Even her name, I think it's really cute, Calamari, because she's daughter of the Kraken, which is a giant squid. Even her makeup is really pretty and like tropical. I like the bright colors that they gave her. Even her pose and her character artwork is really playful and I like it. Her doll is also one of the most unique Monster High characters I think we've ever gotten in terms of the sculpt. I think it's really cool. And even in the movie, she starts off as a villain, but it gets revealed. I don't want to spoil it, but later on, her character arc is really interesting, and I actually like it quite a lot. And she's the character that caught my eye out of this movie the most. I think it's just because I really liked her design the first time I saw it. She just has like that mesmerizing quality about her, kind of like a real octopus. And this might be controversial that I'm about to do this, but I'm going to give her the honor of being the first character that I would officially live for. Okay, up next here, another scarier reef character, we have Perry and Pearl. They're twin sisters technically, but they're the same person. Basically, they share the same body. They're daughters of the Hydra, which makes sense why they only have one body and two heads, because it's a mythical serpent that has like several heads. They limited it to two in this character, and I think that was a really smart idea. But at the same time, it wasn't very practical because I never had the doll. But most people who had her said that like the doll really couldn't turn their heads either way because they were really close together. Honestly, the position they were in looks really uncomfortable. But besides that, I think the design is pretty okay. I like how their hair is like opposite. One of them has blue with white highlights and the other one has white with blue highlights. They're the same person, but they're always bickering and arguing because also they're sisters. So they share the same body, but not the same brain. I think that's really cute. She doesn't have legs, or I guess I should say they don't have legs. 
because they are daughters of a sea serpent, so their bottom half is just like a tail. And the main thing for this line is that all the mermaid dolls were able to stand on their own, and I thought that was really unique and interesting. Perry and Pearl were just a side character in the movie, and I don't remember much about their personalities besides the fact that they were always bickering with each other. I think I'm gonna put her in the fantastic category, because I actually do really like it now that I'm speaking more about her. Or them. I keep saying her. It's two people. Up next, we have Posey Reef, and I don't remember who she's supposed to be the daughter of. I think it's Poseidon. But she's not really a monster, she's kind of more like a sea god. But her design is pretty interesting. Instead of having a fish lower half, since she's not really half human, half fish, her lower half is just like a bunch of seaweed, but she kind of has like an octopus look to her. She's not very memorable in my opinion, but I do really like her color palette. And I've always liked her head sculpt on the actual doll, I think it's really pretty. And her personality in the movie, she tries to be helpful to the ghouls, but she kind of doesn't really know how to use her powers yet. And Goofy, she's a silly character. Do I think she's a fantastic character? Not really, she never makes another appearance ever again. But I would say hi to her in the hallways. Okay, up next, we have the final little sister character of all the ghouls. And this one's weird, because this was pre-reboot. All the other sibling characters, the little sibling characters, were post-reboot. But her name, I think, is Kelpie, if I remember right. And she's Laguna's little sister, if it wasn't obvious. But this was before the reboot. Laguna technically had a little sister in the official canon of Monster High. And we already know how I feel about little sister characters at this point. I actually think she's the cutest out of all the sibling characters. It's kind of dorky and goofy, but she really looks up to Laguna. I just don't really like how colorful she is, and she doesn't resemble Laguna besides the hair. I feel bad putting her with the other little sibling characters in Monster High Dropout, but she does look really cute in this thumbnail. And I think I would say hi to her in the hallways if Laguna ever bought her to like bring your little sister to school day. Now that I'm looking at all the characters I've dropped out, most of them are from the reboot, and I just remembered something else. I'm gonna come back to bully Ari a little bit more, but there was an unreleased doll of her, but thank goodness that doll was not released because they gave her this awful curly poof hairstyle and she looked like a giant poodle you and your wig get out of my life sorry i just had to come back and kick her one more time even though she's already dropped out of monster high after all that negativity let's get back to something positive and i'm going to talk about one of my favorite doll lines the monster high's ever created which is freaky fusion i love this doll line ever since before it was released Mattel do not hate me for this, but there used to be like old Facebook pages and blogs that would have like a lot of leaks about Monster High before the official releases. Like every time there's gonna be a brand new doll line or a new movie, I would always search the internet for leaks. So Mattel, please do not sue me. But I remember ever since I laid eyes on all the characters from Freaky Fusion, I immediately fell in love. I thought they were so gorgeous. Still to this day, I think they're some of the most gorgeous designs we've ever gotten in Monster High. And I just have really good memories with this doll line. So to start off, here we have Avia Trotter, and she's daughter of a harpy and a centaur. The whole basis of Freaky Fusion is that these characters aren't children of one specific type of monsters. They actually have mixed scaritage and they're supposed to represent mixed cultures and families and I think that's really great. And the dolls are really beautiful. And Avia Trotter's doll is very unique because she is the only Monster High character that has four legs because her bottom half is a horse. But since she's also half harpy, she also has wings. She kind of has like a circus ringleader theme which I think is kind of interesting since horses are used in the circus. And I also just really like her character art, I think she looks really fierce, and I like her top hat, I think it's funny. And I think for all those reasons I just said, she's gonna gallop her way into I would live for this character. So far, the only two characters on this tier all have more than two arms and legs. Up next from Freaky Fusion, we have Bonita Femur, and again, I really love this doll, I think she's absolutely gorgeous. She's half skeleton and half moth, and her doll comes with these gigantic wings that also work as her own doll stand. Just like Great Scary Reef, these dolls are meant to be able to stand on their own, and they all can, so she uses her wings to balance herself. And one thing I really love about this character is that the doll actually has super long hair. It's like platinum blonde, but she also has black and pink streaks. Her sculpt is also really unique as well, because she she has a skeleton upper body and arms just like Skeleta, but her lower half has like these little segmented pieces that look fuzzy like a moth. And she also has these little moth ears which are super cute. And her doll has these gigantic eyes which I think are really beautiful. And I never had this doll but I've always really wanted her. She's on my wish list just because I want to be able to touch and play with her hair. I want to brush it so bad. It looks so fun to do that for hours. I don't think this is fact but in my head she's cousins with Skeleta Calaveras which makes me love her even more. So for that reason I'm going to put her in. I would to live for this character. 
So up next, we have Sirena Von Boo. And if I didn't say enough how much I love the other two characters, I really, really love Sirena Von Boo. She's the first official, technically, mermaid doll that we ever got, but she is actually half mermaid, half ghost. And I remember right when I saw her character design, I immediately fell in love with it. I think it's one of the most gorgeous character designs we've ever gotten in Monster High. Her doll is really unique. Her tail is like pearlescent white, but it fades to black. And she doesn't have her usual fin. It kind of looks ghostly and wispy, like if it's disappearing. And she has this awesome chain belt that goes all the way down her tail. And her hair color is absolutely gorgeous and I think it looks really pretty against her pale white skin. And her face is just really cute. I think she was a great choice to represent the first Mer character in Monster High. Mermaid characters are always super gorgeous and she's no exception, she's really gorgeous. And her personality in the movie and the webisodes is like really ditzy, she's kind of dumb, but that's because she gets distracted a lot, she just floats around from thought to thought. And I relate to her a lot because she can't ever focus on one single thing, she's always flying around. And she's just super cute and adorable and I love her so much. I actually think she's in my top 10 Monster High characters of all time. I've never made a list like that, but I do think she'd definitely be up there. She's my favorite out of all the Freaky Fusion characters, and if it's not obvious where I'm going to put her by this point, I would 100% live for Sirena Von Boo. So lastly, here we have Nathan Ra, and he's the final Freaky Fusion character. And by all the others, I think you can kind of guess where I'm going to put him, right? Well, you're wrong. Because out of all the Freaky Fusion characters, I actually like Nathan the least. Not for any specific reason, I can't really put my finger on why I don't like him. He's a half unicorn, half zombie, and he's the only boy fusion that we got out of all the Freaky Fusion characters. And his sculpt is really interesting. He has like a gray skin tone, but he also has like sculpted on tissue and muscles that you can see on his face and on some of his body. I don't really know why I didn't like this character, but I think it just might be his color palette. The primary colors are just really classic in my eyes. His outfit is also kind of basic. I think it's a cute idea. There's just something about it that I don't really like about him. I don't really remember much of his personality either. He's just kind of shy. It's kind of a shame that I couldn't put all the Freaky Fusion characters in the very top tier, but I think I'm gonna have to put him in. I would say hi to you in the hallways. <laughs> After hating on him for like a minute straight, let's go back to another character I love, which is Honey Swamp. And I actually did own this doll. I remember I asked my mom to buy it for me for my birthday and she did. And that was one of the most happiest moments of my entire life. Some Monster High characters, in my opinion, just have perfect character designs. Sirena Von Boo was one of them. And I think Honey Swamp is another one that I just absolutely think is perfect. She has like this very curly hair that I think is really gorgeous. Her skin tone is absolutely gorgeous. It's like this minty color, kind of similar to Frankie's. Her makeup makeup is really pretty, her color palette is absolutely gorgeous, it's all pastels and it works really well together. Her personality is very sweet, she's from Boo Orleans, so she has a southern accent. She's actually based on a swamp monster, but she kind of resembles an alligator, which I think is really cute. Her doll sculpt is also really cool, she has like vines and moss and stuff sculpted onto her body and her arms and legs. She also has webbed fingers, and her spine is like an alligator spine, it resembles like the scales on their backs, which I think is a, such a gorgeous detail. And she's a movie director, so she comes with like a little camera and her little clackety clack board. Even her name, Honey Swamp just sounds very sweet and I love this character so 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 much. I think she's in the bottom of a drawer somewhere and I don't really know where she is but I love that doll. I really 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 want to find another one in box that I could just keep in perfect condition forever because I love this character that much and of course I would live for Honey Swamp. Okay, up next we have Alyssa Bat. And by the way, I didn't mention it, but now we're doing the characters from Fright's Camera Action, which is another Draculaura movie. But Alyssa Bat, in that movie, she's Draculaura's cousin. I think that's a twist. I don't know if I just spoiled it if you haven't seen that movie. And she's also the vampire queen. But I really like her character design. She basically looks like Draculaura's even more goth cousin. But her color palette is black and purple, and I think it's just really pretty. Her design is kind of simple. She just has an old Victorian style dress, but a little bit more more modernized. I think her whole character design just is really pretty and it contrasts well against Draculaura who's more bright. And in the movie, she's actually an actress. She's a famous movie star. And I think her doll just gives off that vibe. Like she's just very, very pretty. She looks like a superstar and I would definitely live for Elizabeth. Okay, so now we have Claudia Wolf, and this is actually Claudine's older sister, but she's an older sister character, not a younger sister character which we've already established that I don't like. Do you think I'm gonna like this character? Vote yes or no, you have three seconds. 
The answer is yes. I really love this character. I think she's super gorgeous. Her doll is also really beautiful. And Claudia, I believe, is the only character in Monster High history to have a sculpted on smile instead of just the basic closed mouth. The closed mouth of all the other characters makes them look really fierce, but with Claudia's smile, she just immediately looks very friendly. Her golden blonde hair in a ponytail I think is really pretty as well. And I just love Claudia a lot. She's a writer and she comes with glasses and she's just really cute and I would totally live for her. Okay, so finally we have the last character from Frights Camera Action. And do you guys think she could join the rest of her Frights Camera Action crew in the top tier? Or is she gonna pull a Nathan Rock and drop out at the last second? The answer is, I would definitely live for this character. I think she's super gorgeous. I think she's Deuce's cousin because her mother is Medusa's sister. She's a makeup artist in the movie, but she has this whole 70s theme to her outfit and her hair, which I think is really gorgeous. And the way they utilized her snakes, I think is really cute and unique because she uses them as a headband, but also they're kind of intermixed within her hair. And her color palette is like pastel pink and a pastel periwinkle. And her skin is this really gorgeous cream color and it's kind of pearlescent. And I just think she's really pretty. Her doll even comes with like a mini makeup palette which is super cute. I did say I loved Freaky Fusion with all my heart but I guess I like Fright's camera action a little bit more because all the new characters from that line made it into the very top tier. So congratulations to Fright's camera action for having gorgeous characters. Also I just noticed but the way I have them set up right now they're kind of forming a giant E. Coincidence? Okay so up next I have some of the ghouls from the student exchange doll line which is basically just a way to introduce monsters from different countries that are transferring to Monster High. And I actually really enjoyed this doll line I think the characters were super cute. So to start off we have this ghoul and I believe her name is Batsy. She's from Costa Rica and she's a daughter of a bat monster or something but I think her character design is really cool. Instead of traditional wings she has like these skeletal wings which I think was really unique and I think her color palette is really pretty too. Her skin is like a very 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 pale pink and so is her hair but she has like these lime streaks throughout it. The rest of her outfit is based on the color green which is really cute. Her shoes and her headband are to look like woven leaves that she made herself. I don't really remember much about her personality but that doesn't really matter in my opinion because I just love her character design. I think it's super adorable. I don't know if I would necessarily live for this character. When I'm looking at her right now I'm thinking like Yas. I do think she's fantastic so I think I'm gonna have to put her in fantastic. Okay so up next we have another character from the monster exchange line and this is Charity Trollson. I don't know much about her character She's the only doll out of this line that I don't have many thoughts about. She's supposed to be a troll based on Norwegian myths. She's a troll, but she's also a gamer. So her design is based off like video games. It's all pixelated. Her glasses are made out of pixels. Her bag is a giant game controller, which I think is super cute. And her beanie has like little troll horns. Her eyes are even painted on to look like they're pixelated, which I also think is super cute. And I especially love her big ears. Besides the little horns and the big ears, I wouldn't have known she's supposed to be a troll. I do think I would say hi in the hallways to her. I don't know much about her personality, Maybe if I knew more, I would think she's fantastic, but for now, I'm gonna stick her in the hallways with everybody else. Okay, after talking about one of my least favorite dolls from that line, now we're gonna talk about one of my most favorites, and this is E.C. Dawn Dancer. She's the daughter of a deer spirit from Native American Legends, and she lives in Boo, Mexico, and I think she is probably the prettiest doll to come out of this line. I just think she's so gorgeous. Her sculpt is based on a deer, so she has these big eyes and this little nose and then these giant ears. Her headband also has deer antlers which is super adorable and her makeup is meant to resemble a deer's face so it just makes her look extra cute and super innocent and not only that but i think her design and color palette is extremely gorgeous her outfit is like this bright red but then her hair is this teal aqua color and i think it just complements the outfit so well and she also reminds me of fauna from animal crossing not just because they're both deers but because they're both sweet they have a really sweet personality and i really want this doll if i ever come across it i think i will buy it and of course after spewing all that love for her, I'm going to have to put her in I would live for this character. Okay, second to last from the Monster Exchange characters, we have Marisol Coxie, and she's actually supposed to be a Bigfoot character. I believe she's based on a monster from Peru, which is like a Sasquatch type character, and I think she's super cute. Her sculpt is really interesting to me. They actually sculpted her feet to be giant, unlike Abby Abominable, who's another Yeti character. But for Marisol, they gave her some giant feet with fur sculpted on, and besides that, I actually really like her colorful design. Her hair is this bright magenta, and she has a bunch of lime green and bright 
bright orange in her character design which I think is really pretty. The only thing is that her skin is like this weird grayish purple which really throws me off every time I look at her. I wouldn't say she's one of my favorites out of this line but I really love her sculpt. Also in the Monster High canon, her and Abby are cousins which I think is an excellent detail. Would I live for her? No. But do I think she's pretty fantastic? Yes. Would I let her use me as a human soccer ball? Yes. Okay, so lastly, out of the Monster Exchange line, here we have Lorna McNessie, and if it wasn't obvious from her last name, she's daughter of the Loch Ness Monster, and she's a Scottish character, which I think is super cool, mostly because I like her plaid beret and her plaid skirt. She also has this bright red curly hair, which complements her light blue skin perfectly in my opinion. I think her color palette is really nice and pleasing to the eyes. She's another doll with the little sister body mold, so she's a bit shorter than all the other characters, but I think that's super cute, and I absolutely love her sculpt, especially her fins, they're a bit different than Laguna's fins, and I've always thought this doll was just super pretty, and honestly I think she's too cute to not put in I would live for this character, so I think I would definitely live for her. Okay, so up next, we have a few of the characters from the Haunted doll line, and Haunted is one of my favorite doll lines out of Monster High. I feel like I've said that five times in a row at this point, but so many of the Monster High doll lines were hits in my opinion. And Haunted, if you didn't know, or if you haven't watched the movie, is actually Spectra's character movie, which I think is really interesting because we don't see much of Spectra, but they decided to give her a full movie, which was really cool. She is a fan favorite character after all, which makes me dislike Ari even more. But basically throughout that movie we're introduced to a whole bunch of new ghost characters that actually go to a different school than Monster High. They go to an exclusively ghost school in the ghost dimension. And one of the students from that school is this character that we have here and her name is Kiyomi Haunterly. And she's daughter of the Nopera Bo which I think is a Japanese ghost. And Nopera Bo apparently means no face and if you couldn't tell by the little character art right here, she actually has no face. Even on her doll she doesn't have a face. She has like the painted on outline of a face but no actual face. But even if there's nothing there, I think she's really pretty. And her design is also super gorgeous. And also in the movie, I'm not going to spoil the twist or what happens in it. But her personality is super cute. And the reason why she's haunting one of the characters is super adorable in my opinion. And even though she's a ghost, I would totally live for her. So next from the haunted line, we have Vandala Bloons, And she's based off a of pirate, which I think is kind of weird. But really interesting and in the movie she even has this pirate accent which she never drops some people could think it's annoying but i think it's super charming and i absolutely love her character design i think she is so gorgeous especially her doll i've always wanted that doll too i've wanted all the haunted dolls because i think the ghosts are just super unique they all have something cool about them and Vandala actually has a wooden leg so she has a peg leg which i think is super cute how they went all out with the pirate theme and every time i think about her i think of the pirate from spongebob i think she's one of the weirder Monster High characters because literally why would they make her a pirate but I think she's super cool and I think she should be Davy Jones daughter and not Dana Treasurer Jones this would have been a much better fit but I love her design and I love her personality and I love her pirateness so I would totally live for this character. Okay, so up next we have River Styx, and this character, every time I look at her, she just reminds me of Candy. She looks super sweet. I absolutely love her character design, how they use like bright bubblegum colors. But something super unique about her doll is that she has like translucent skin, but she also has bones underneath, just like Skeleta. So you can see her bones through her arms and legs, which I think is super cool. And her makeup is painted on to resemble like a skull. And she actually drives the boat which takes monsters to and from the ghost dimension. But one really funny thing about her character is that she's like a really heavy party girl. And she loves to throw a party and she loves everything sweet and sparkly. So instead of a regular haunted boat, it's actually a haunted party boat. Besides her character design being super gorgeous, she is just a super fun character. And she seems super friendly and fun to be around. And I would totally want to attend one of the parties on her party boat. And for that reason, I'm going to put her in I would live for this character. Finally here we have Porter Geist and he's the only boy ghost that we got out of this line but I think he's one of the best boy character designs Monster High's ever given us but I just think he's super charming and cool. I don't remember much about his personality in the movie but I do remember liking him and he's super nice to Spectra. I think they're supposed to be like love interests. I don't remember if they're dating by the end of the movie but I think he's a pretty cool guy and a pretty cool character. Would I necessarily live for him? I don't think so but I do really like his character design and I do think it's pretty fantastic. And that's where my heart's telling me to put him. Okay, so up next, we have some of the characters from, you guessed it, another one of my favorite doll lines ever. 
and this is Scare's City of Frights, which is Claudine's character movie. And I think every single design from this movie was absolutely gorgeous. I really love that doll line. Not even just the new characters, all the base characters, I think they were very pretty. But if you remember when I talked about Donatella Ghostier, she has a competition with a whole bunch of up-and-coming designer monsters, and she makes them compete, and the winner is the one she like sucks the soul out and steals their ideas and locks them up in prison forever. But these are some of the contestants. Jennifer Long is one of them, and she's based on an eastern dragon, and I think she's so gorgeous. You can obviously tell there's a lot of Chinese influence in her character design. She's even wearing like a kipao, and she has lots of gold and red in her character design, which I think is super gorgeous. And I've just always loved her golden skin, I think it's very pretty. And her makeup, she looks super fierce. This is one of the character designs that I think is super perfect in my opinion, and I wouldn't change a thing about it. And if you don't know where I'm going to put her by this point, I would totally live for Jennifer Long. Okay, so up next we have Skelita Calaveras, and this is another super special character to me, because I also asked for her for one of my birthdays and my mom bought her for me. And again, one of the happiest days of my entire life. This is another perfect character design in my opinion, I just think she's super gorgeous. Her whole body is a skeleton, so she's sculpted to just be bones. And her doll is kind of fragile, I actually broke the head off mine, which I'm super sad about. But I think she's just super pretty, I love the bump in her hair, I think it's super cute, and her long curls. Her makeup is designed to look like a candy skull or a painted skull for Day of the Dead, which is a holiday in Mexico. And I really like her outfit too, her skirt is made of like little flags. And I just really like this character, I've always liked this character, she's one of my favorites of all time. And if it wasn't obvious by all that, I would also totally 100% live for Skelita Calaveras. Okay, so up next we have Katrine Demu. And actually, this icon is not her base design, this is like another design that we got later on as a doll, I think. But I think her original design is super gorgeous, I really love Katrine. She's a very mysterious character in my opinion, we don't get much of her. But what we do get, I think is really interesting. She's another artist from Scaris, and she's super cute, she's based on a white cat, she's a werecat. But her color palette is mostly white and lavender. Her original design has a very Paris vibe, and I just really like her style. She's very demure and she reminds me a lot of a real cat. She's kind of blank in terms of personality, but I prefer her to be super mysterious, and even though I know barely anything about her, I would totally live for her. I would live every single 9 lives for her. But back to over here. The final character from Scaris is Garrett Duro, and he's a gargoyle character. He's actually Rochelle's boyfriend, but I think his story in the movie is super sweet, and he just looks charming. His design's pretty basic, but I love his, like, teal hair. And I love his love for Rochelle. And the story in the movie alone is pushing me over the edge. And I think instead of I would say hi in the hallways to him, that's making me want to put him in fantastic. So that's where I decided I'm going to put him. So up next, we have Amanita Nightshade. And I believe she's from the Gloom and Bloom doll line. And she's daughter. Actually, I don't think she's daughter of anybody. She's actually just a corpse flower. And she's actually a villain in her storyline. She's a bully. And she's really mean to especially Cleo Nefra. They have a long history and they go way back, but she's super self-centered and egotistical. She's very vain and she loves herself and her personality. She thinks her appearance is the most important thing and she's very selfish and mean and rude. She's even taking a selfie in her character art, but even though she's supposed to be a villain and she's really mean to the other ghouls, I really like her. <laughs> because even though she's a villain, she can't stop slaying and she looks really pretty. I think her doll is super gorgeous, especially her dress and her hair. Even her makeup, instead of normal eyelashes, they like transform into little leaves, which is super adorable. And I just love a good villain character, so that erases the fact that she's a villain in my brain. Even though Amanita lives for nobody but herself, I would live for her too. Okay, so next we have Headmistress Bloodgood. And OG Monster High fans remember that there used to be like these competitions that Mattel would do, where they would make three prototype characters of characters that fans have been demanding to be made into dolls, and they would pit them against each other for a limited amount of time, and whoever got the most votes was made into an actual doll. And in the first round of this voting system, Headmistress Bloodgood was one of the characters that could be voted on, but I think she's very gorgeous. I love her character, how she's the headmistress of the school. She cares a lot for the ghouls, and she's actually super nice to them in a lot of the movies and webisodes. I especially love her horse, Nightmare. I love their dynamic together. They're super cute. And her design is pretty basic. She just has like a long purple coat with pink accents on it and black pants but she's kind of designed to be like an equestrian or a horse rider which makes sense because she has a horse and i just like her a lot she's very iconic she runs monster high like it's the navy i believe we only got one headmistress bloodgood doll officially 
She came in that 2-pack with Nightmare, her horse. But there's this one doll that I believe is unreleased, but I think she looks so gorgeous in that. And I think it's a shame that we never got that doll to hit the shelves, but she was so gorgeous there. And of course, I would totally live for Headmistress Bloodgood. Nightmare too, even though he's not in this little picture. But Nightmare, I love you. So up next, we have Cast the Fierce. And if you couldn't tell by her name, she's actually supposed to be based on Beyonce, her alter ego, Sasha Fierce. They even designed her to resemble Beyonce, which I thought was very funny and cute. I don't really know why this character exists, honestly. I don't remember if she makes an appearance in the webisodes or any of the movies. She just kind of came out one day. But even then, I really like her character design as well. She's the first witch officially in Monster High. And they didn't make her like a traditional witch. She's a witch singer and she's a celebrity in the monster world and i think it's a good thing they didn't give her the typical witch hat because that would have been so boring i don't think they ever made an official witch character that looked like a straight up witch because i believe this is around the time that bratzillas came out and kind of stole monster high's whole idea but i really love cast the fierce i love her color palette it's like halloween colors and i love her dress i absolutely love her puffy sleeves with like the harnesses around them i think that's super cool and yeah overall she's a pretty random character that just exists in the monster high universe but i would 100 100% live for her and I would totally be her fan. So next we have Manny Tar, and he was originally a background character. He's one of the guys on the basketball team and he was kind of a bully in his original appearances but eventually he just got turned into like a big friendly dummy. And I guess he was a fan favorite because eventually I think he came out in a Comic Con exclusive 2 pack with Iris, another background character. She's right here right next to him. And they're actually dating their boyfriend and girlfriend, which I think is super adorable. I don't know why, but I think it's cute that he's like mean to everybody else, but he really cares for Iris. And their designs are pretty basic, both of them. I think Iris got an upgrade from her original backgrounder design. They actually added more detail onto her. She's supposed to be a Cyclops, and I think she's super cute. I'm bunching them together because they're just a unit in my mind. You can't separate the two. And I just think they're super cute. If they ever broke up, love would be officially dead. And I think both of them are fantastic, so I'm going to put them there together. So up next, we have Finnegan Wake, and he's another mermaid character. He was also in one of the competition polls that Mattel did. I believe it was him and two other characters that eventually never got made because that's when Monster High entered the reboot phase, which is really sad that we didn't get more background characters before Monster High ended the first time. But I don't think he was even a background character. I think he was a completely original design that they just made fans vote on to be made into a doll. But I think his design is super cool. I like his personality a lot. He's a merman, but he's actually half fish. So unlike Sirena Von Boo, he cannot stand up or float around. He actually uses a wheelchair and he's the first Monster High character to have a wheelchair, which is super cool that they did that for representation. But he's also an athlete, so he's really buff, except for his bottom half. It just kind of tapers off into a tail. But I love his personality. He's really energetic. He's really optimistic. And I love his giant mohawk. So I'm going to put him in Fangtastic. So to go on with the backgrounders theme, here we have Gilda Goldstag. This is another character that just came out of nowhere one day. She was in a five pack with a bunch of the other ghouls. But despite that, I think she's super cool. I don't remember who she's the daughter of or what kind of monster she's supposed to be. But she's based on a stag and she has these giant horns. She has no eyebrows and her hair is like in a little, I don't know what to call it. It's like Heath Burns if he had real hair. But I think her design is super unique, kind of weird, but very adorable. And one thing about her is that they literally changed absolutely nothing from her original backgrounder design. They just made her into a doll. I don't know if she has any speaking lines. I don't think she ever speaks. Another reason why it's so weird that she got made into a doll, in my opinion. Besides the fact that I literally have no clue about this character besides her name, I do think she's pretty fantastic and I really like her design. Based on my description of her, you would think I would put her in Um Who Are You Again, but I just really like her for some reason. She's very mysterious and charming, so I think she's pretty fantastic. Okay, so up next we have Invisibility. He's another new character that got introduced to us. I don't remember if it's with any specific line. Well, he's not really a ghost, he's the son of the invisible man, so he's just invisible. I think his design is alright, it's pretty cool. I don't really know why he exists either. I think he had like a romance going on with the operetta or something. Maybe I just made that up in my brain. But yeah, he's just kind of meh in my opinion. He's boring, but it's whatever. Out of all the manster characters, he's just one that I don't really know anything about. But there's nothing really negative I have to say about him. He just kind of exists in the background like an invisible person. I don't hear you, I don't see you, you don't exist to me at this moment. But I would say hi in the hallways to him. So up next, we have Goliope Jellington, and she's from the Freak Do Chic line, which is like a circus baseline. All the dolls had like a different role in the circus, so they all came with a different unique feature. 
Jennifer breathed fire, Torlai was a trapeze artist, I believe. Honey Swamp was a marionette, and her legs were all wobbly and loose on purpose, which I think was very cute. But Goliope has something really special about her, and that's the fact that she's the first ever giant Monster High doll. Eventually, they came out with like the monster-sized ghouls, I believe that was what they were called, or frightfully tall ghouls. But Goliope is daughter of unknown, but she's supposed to be a blob character, and she's gigantic. And I don't know why, but I remember seeing leaks of her as well. Again, Mattel, I apologize. But I thought she was super gorgeous. I remember she was kind of rare and hard to find. I don't know if she's easier to find these days. Her skin is all drippy and goopy. And she's the only Monster High character that actually has double articulation in her elbows and knees. So she can bend them more than the average Monster High character. She also had this weird promotional thing with like Jordan Sparks where they were walking around. And they made a life-size Goliope on stilts which was very weird. <laughs> I don't really know how that was benefiting the sales of her doll. I think she's very special. She's a very cool character. And I would totally live for her. So up next, we have Jane Boolittle, and I don't remember who she's the daughter of. I think it's Dr. Boolittle. I don't know if he was a monster or what his deal is. I don't exactly know what she's supposed to be either. I think she was discovered in the jungle by Dr. Boolittle and he kind of like adopted her. And I like her design. I think it's super cool and unique. I just don't know much about her personality. She's another character that in my head, I'm just like, why do you exist? Not in a bad way, but I just literally don't know why she was made. I think her Gloom and Bloom doll is absolutely gorgeous though and I really like it. I think I like it better than her base design. But there's just something about her, I don't know why, but she just looks like a human with purple skin in my opinion. I don't know what kind of monster she's supposed to be. But besides all that, I do think she's pretty fantastic and I really like that Gloom and Bloom doll so that pushes me to put her in fantastic. Okay, so next we have Wydona Spider aka Webarella. And I have mixed feelings about this character. If you remember from earlier, she was one of the characters that was in the first round of voting. But the difference is that her original prototype doll had this like weird western country influence to her design which was super weird. I don't know what that has to do with a spider. But when she officially got released, I believe she was a comic con exclusive as well. But they gave her this like whole comic book theme with her outfits and her design and she's a superhero in like a comic book. Her name is Webarella. That's her superhero alter ego. And I believe that's supposed to be like her base design. But I think that's kind of lame in my opinion. I don't know why. I just prefer the western version even though it was super weird. But the comic book version, I guess it makes sense because she was a Comic Con exclusive, but I think it was just kind of lame. I don't know why, I just think it's super underwhelming. Even though I love her doll and her sculpt, I think it's one of the most gorgeous Monster High dolls. She has pure black skin and she has multiple red eyes and her scarlet hair is just so gorgeous. Not to mention that she has three arms on each side. I just don't know why they decided to go to the superhero route. I think it was kind of weird choice. But even then, I think she's one of the most unique Monster High characters ever in terms of a doll. And I think I'm going to put her in Fangtastic. So now we have C.A. Cupid, who's a character that was introduced to us for Dracula's Sweet 1600 doll line. Which is one of my favorite Monster High doll lines, again. I just think all the dolls from that line are super gorgeous, especially Draculaura. I've always wanted her with that big poofy hair and her cupcake dress. I think she's super cute. I think she's just one of the most adorable characters ever. She has a little heart in her hair, which is super cute. I love her fluffy pink hair. She has these bone wings instead of regular like angel wings. And her skin, her arms like fade to black, but she has this lacing over them, which makes them look super cool. I especially love her little heart lipstick and her pink cheeks. I think she's super cute. She kind of has a 1920s vibe. And also she has a little radio show where she gives the monsters love advice, which I think is super cool. But she also plays an important role in Why Do Ghouls Fall In Love, Dracula's movie. And I believe that's the first Monster High movie I ever saw. I think it came on on Nickelodeon or something and I stayed up just to watch it and I didn't want to go to the bathroom during the commercials because I didn't want to miss a single thing. But I just really love this character. I believe she's super rare nowadays and she's very expensive and hard to find. But I've always wanted her. I really like her a lot and I would 100% live for her. Okay, so up next we have Gil and um... my god, there's room for everybody, let's just say that. I don't know. <laughs> I've just never really liked Gil. 
I think he's fine as a character. I think his design is pretty cool. He never got a real official base outfit. He just kind of wears his letterman jacket around all the time. I like that he has a helmet full of water at all times because he's a freshwater monster. And he's actually Laguna's boyfriend, but I don't know if I'm just misremembering, but he's kind of dorky, but he's also really mean to Laguna sometimes, especially in 13 Wishes. I just don't really like him in that movie. Whenever I think of Gil, I'm just like, Laguna, you can do better, girl. <laughs> He also totally looks like Handsome Squidward, but I don't know, something about him just rubs my scales the wrong way. But I feel bad putting him in any of the low tiers, cause he is Laguna's boyfriend, she has to like him for some reason. For now, I'm just gonna be polite and say I would say hi to him in the hallways. Okay, so up next we have Heath Burns, and he was originally another background character, but he was developed a lot in the webisodes and the movies. I think he was one of the first monsters we ever got introduced to in Monster High, and his whole personality is that he's like a flirt and he's super dorky. He thinks all the ghouls love him, but in reality, they all think he's super lame and cheesy. He's kind of full of himself, but in like an endearing way, in a charming way. And he's overall just a goofball. I think he's really funny. I like his character a lot. He's another character that never got an outfit just like Gil. He always just has his Letterman jacket on with Monster High symbol on it. I also don't know what monster he's supposed to be based on. I think he's like a fire spirit or something. And a fun fact is that he's actually Holtide's cousin, which makes sense why they both have flames for hair. And honestly, Heath Burns is kind of dorky, but he does have a heart of gold. And I would totally live for him because I know he would sacrifice himself for any of the other ghouls. Okay, so now we have another monster, which is Who Dude. He came in a two-pack with Scara Screams. They were both background characters, and I guess they just decided to bunch them both together. And if I'm remembering right, Frankie created Who Dude because she really wanted a boyfriend, but he's just very goofy and silly and very cute and adorable, and I don't have much to say about him. Actually, I have a lot to say about him, but I can't say it all. Just know that it's all positive, and I really like Who Dude. I think he's super cute. So there's no doubt about this. I'm not even gonna say where I'm gonna put him. You can just watch. Okay, so up next we have Slow-Mo, and he's a zombie character. He's another background character that eventually got made into a doll. He's actually Ghoulia's boyfriend, which I think is super cute that they got Ghoulia to pair up with somebody. And I do not know what he's saying. He doesn't really have a personality because he's a zombie. He just moans and groans all the time. But he cares a lot for Ghoulia, and I think his design is very silly. His eyes are like facing different directions. His doll looks kind of wonky. We got a few of them, and I think they look weird. I think the animation looks better. But I like Slow-Mo a lot. He stole my heart very slowly. So up next we have Scara Screams, and she's the fan favorite character that got made into a doll in the first voting competition. And I think for good reason, I think she's very gorgeous. She has this whole 1960s concept with her design, and I just think it's very adorable. She's supposed to be a banshee, but I think she can also read minds. And one of the most interesting things about her design is that she has no eyeballs, they're just pure white. And I remember when I found out that she won the competition, like, I didn't mind. I actually agreed. I think she deserved to win, she was really gorgeous. For her prototype, I believe they used a repaint painted Frankie doll, but the official doll I think looks way better. And I don't know what else to say, I just really think she deserved to be made into a doll first. She got exactly what she needed, and she did what she had to do. And of course, I would live for Scara Scream. So next we have Caddy Noir, and I believe she was introduced to us in 13 Wishes, but she's another famous singer in the monster world, if we didn't have enough of those already. And I absolutely love Caddy Noir. I think her original doll release, her original design, is one of the most iconic Monster High designs ever. She's a black cat and her whole theme is based around like bad luck that's associated with black cats. So her dress is like a shattered mirror, but she's really gorgeous and I absolutely love her original design. We got multiple dolls of her and I actually love a lot of them. I want to own a lot of them. Her Boo York design I think is super cute too. But overall, she's just one of the most stunning Monster High characters ever and she definitely has that star quality so it makes sense why she's a famous celebrity in the monster world and I just think she's super fierce and if she was a real celebrity in the human world I would totally stream her music. So up next we have Gigi and Wisp Grant. They're supposed to be twin sisters I believe but technically they're the same person because Wisp is Gigi's shadow. They have the same exact design except some minor differences and their color palettes are reversed. Wisp has a darker color palette than Gigi but just to get them both out of the way I think their designs are so gorgeous. Gigi especially I think her doll is very gorgeous. I've always wanted it. She's based off a scorpion so her hair has like segments with a little curl in the end to look like the scorpion stinger and she has segments all over her body which is very unique because they have a whole desert theme going on. I even love her name, Gigi. It's really fun to say. And she's a very nice character. She cares a lot for her friends. Moving on to Wisp. She's a villain in the original story, but she eventually gets redeemed in the end. Not to spoil it, but I just did. But I think her design is very cool. I love her face tattoos. She came in a two-pack with Valentine. I think it was like a villain's two-pack. 
And I just love these characters so much, I would totally live for both of them. Okay, so up next we have Twyla, and she was also introduced to us in 13 Wishes. She's supposed to be Howleen's best friend, and she's daughter of the Boogeyman. And she just hides in the shadows all the time, her personality is very introverted, and she stays quiet most of the time. But I think she's absolutely adorable. Again, another perfect Monster High design in my opinion, I think her color palette is super gorgeous, I love her lilac skin, and I love how it fades to grey and little wisps at the bottom of her limbs. I just also really like her personality, I relate to her a lot. And she has this one doll, I don't remember what line it's from, I think it's the Creepateria or something. But the doll where she has like the baby bangs, I think that's absolutely gorgeous and she looks so good there. She's also such a good friend to Halloween, and I just love Twyla a lot. And of course since I said she has a perfect design, you know where I'm gonna put her at this point. So Halloween, she wasn't introduced to us in 13 Wishes, but I am putting her with the other 13 Wishes character because that movie is basically Halloween's movie. So it's nice that we got a Halloween based movie. But for some reason, I don't know why, they decided to change Halloween's whole design in that movie. But they changed Halloween's design because they said like little girls didn't like pink or something, which I think is super ridiculous. I actually prefer her original design. I think this one is super cute too, the one that's pictured here and the one that they gave us for 13 Wishes. They gave her more like of a punk vibe, but I just really like her original design. I remember when I saw her doll, her prototype, I think at New York Toy Fair, I thought it was so gorgeous and so perfect. I love her little hoodie and her little faux hawk with the orange and yellow curls. I think she was super cute. She's Claudine's spunky little sister and I think they make such a great duo. I just love Howleen a lot. Her pink hair doesn't look that bad either, but I just think her original design is so iconic. And yes, I would live for Howling Wolf. Okay, so up next we have Malady and Persephone. They're werecat twins. And I don't have much to say about them. And that is not a bad thing. They're basically Torali's sidekick. I love their designs. They're the original Perry and Pearl where they're twins, but they have opposite designs. When it comes to twins, I think they totally beat Perry and Pearl and Gigi and Wisp. And I would totally live for both of them. Nine lives each. So next, we have Nefer Denial, and I don't think I even have to mention how iconic this doll is. I believe she's one of the rarest Monster High dolls ever. I think I even remember her being rare back then, she was really hard to find so a lot of people wanted her. And she's super expensive these days, but I think she deserves it because this character design is so perfect and so gorgeous. She's the first older sister doll we ever got, she's Cleo's older sister. And she's actually a villain, but I do not care because she's so gorgeous. Her ponytail is iconic, she did it before Ariana Grande. And I would sell my left foot to have this doll because that's how much some of these sellers are pricing her at. I think everybody loves Nefra. I don't think I have to say anything about this and Nefra also would want to be here. She would think she deserved this spot and I think so too. Next we have Operetta, and this is another perfect character design in my opinion. She's daughter of the Phantom of the Opera, but her design, she has this whole like 1950s, 1960s rockabilly inspired aesthetic, which I think is super gorgeous. She's also like a blues singer, which I think is really cool and interesting. I just think her character art is so gorgeous, her doll is very pretty as well. I love her hairstyle, she has like these victory rolls and these very curled bangs. And even her pet spider has this like pompadour hairstyle to resemble Elvis, and I just think it's so cute. But I would kill to have this original doll, I think she's very gorgeous, and of course I would live for Operetta, no questions asked. So now we're getting down to the final ghouls. These are some of the original monsters and dolls that were ever released in Monster High. Those original Monster High releases hit after hit after hit. They did not miss a single time. They were all so gorgeous. And we're gonna start off with Rochelle Goyle, one of the most gorgeous Monster High dolls ever. She's based on a gargoyle and I just think she's super cute. I believe her and Rebecca Steam were introduced to us in the same movie, but it's the one where they're on the roller derby team. And Rochelle's personality, she's kind of like stone cold. She's kind of mean, but that's just the she is and you wouldn't think that by her design because her hair is like this bright pink and blue which is super cute and that's the only color that she has in her original design besides her eyes but the rest of her is just in gray scale she has black and white clothes and i love 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 her so much i regret not buying her when i was like 10 years old and my parents would give me money and i would go to the mall and i would see her but i was like no monster high will still be around in a few years little did i know that wouldn't be true but i just really love rochelle i even love her character pose her original character pose where her little fingers on her lip. She's so flirty and so cute. Gorgeous is the only word I could think to describe her. And yes, I would live for her. Now we have Rebecca Steen, and she was released in the same wave with Rochelle Goyle along with Venus McFly Trap. And again, another perfect design in my opinion. I love her steampunk aesthetic. I own a few Rebecca dolls, but not the original Rebecca doll. But the original, I think is so gorgeous, I would love to have her one day. Her sculpt is super unique. I remember her being like one of the most interesting sculpts Monster High had ever made in that point in time. 
She even has gears on the back of her legs that actually move. I love her skin. It's like this pearlescent bronze that actually shines. And Rebecca's theme is just iconic. I love her so much. Even in the Monster High lore, like in the story of Monster High in the movies, she's a legend. She's a legendary character and a legendary student of Monster High. If you know, you know. So of course, I would live for Rebecca's theme. Up next, we have Venus McFlytrap, and like I said before, those early lines of Monster High were absolutely perfect. Venus is evidence of that. She's daughter of a plant monster, and her design is just super gorgeous. She has this whole punk vibe, so half her head is shaved, which I think is super cool. And I just really love her outfit, like I would own that in real life and I would wear it. I think it's super cute. And if you ever had her actual doll, I think she's the character with the longest eyelashes ever. And her color palette, I just think is super cute too, it reminds me of a watermelon. And I remember when I was like in middle school or something, Thing. my parents had given me like $20 for some reason and I went to the mall one day and I went to the toy section because I wanted to buy a Monster High doll on my own and there was the Create a Monster 2 pack with the vampire and the sea monster and right next to them was Venus McFlytrap because that's when she had just gotten released and I remember thinking who do I want to buy the Create a Monster 2 pack so I could have two dolls in one or Venus McFlytrap they were like the same price which was $20 that's how much dolls cost at that time and I was standing there in the mall for like an hour debating which doll I should buy and can you guess which doll I bought? I bought the two pack, which I regret to this day. I would much rather have the original Venus McFlytrap because I think she's one of the most gorgeous dolls ever and I would totally live for her and if I could relive my life again, I would go back to the mall and I would choose Venus instead of the two pack. We finally arrived at the final row of characters. I organized them so I could put the original ghouls last because I know that's who you guys wanted to see from the beginning but I think it's kind of obvious where I'm going to put most of them so I thought it'd be better to put them at the end but here we're going to start off with Torlai Strike and if I have one word to describe her, it's iconic. Torlai started off as a bully character, but later she kind of evolved into a frenemy character. But I've always really liked Torlai. I love her design. Her original pose and her character art is super fierce and playful. She's kind of mean, but playful. She is a cat after all. And her backstory is kind of tragic and sad, but it explains a lot about her. And I just think she's so gorgeous. She kind of has a can I speak to the manager haircut. And I hope they bring her back for the reboot because she's too iconic not to bring back. Okay, next we have Abby Abominable. I believe she was in the second wave of dolls ever released. That's why I put her here. And again, an absolutely stunning doll. One of the most gorgeous, perfect character designs ever in Monster High's history. She's just super gorgeous. I love her color palette. It's absolutely stunning and very pleasing to look at. I love her personality as well. She's very blunt and straightforward, but other monsters think she's being rude and mean. But that's just like the cultural difference between the Yetis and the other monsters. She thinks she's being nice and she's questioning questioning why all the other monsters don't like her, but it's because they think she's very abrasive. So many of her dolls are absolutely gorgeous. And again, I really love her outfit, her dress and her leg warmers and her boots. I would own those in real life. I think she's so pretty. Also, she has one of the best faces in Monster High ever. Like she could literally model in the monster world in my opinion. Her skin is also iconic. She has like glittery skin and glittery tinsel in her hair. I don't remember if I mentioned this when I was talking about Heath, but they're dating actually. And I think their whole relationship is very cute. How they're like, fire and ice and they have opposite personalities but they work so well together and i just love abby so much and yes i would live for you abby abominable a thousand times so now we have spectra and all the other times i mentioned characters related to spectra i think you get the point of how i feel about spectra she's a fan favorite one of my favorites one of the most iconic monster high dolls ever her original design which is pictured here is so gorgeous she has a very gothic vibe but she's very unique her doll has translucent limbs they like fade into clear plastic which is super Super cool and very original especially since she's a ghost. I think her backstory also kind of rounds out her character and why she is the way she is. It's never revealed how tragic it truly is but it's hinted at several times and that just makes me love her even more and also she could open a tin can with her cheekbones. Up next, we have Holt Hyde and Jackson Jekyll, and I'm doing them together because spoiler alert, they're the same person. I don't know which one's the most dominant personality. I guess it's Jackson because Holt only comes out when there's like music playing, but he's the son of Dr. Jekyll and Dr. Hyde. And what's interesting about Jackson slash Holt is that he's actually half human, half monster. Jackson is his human form and Holt is his monster form. And a lot of other students question why he's even at Monster High if he's a human, but it makes sense when he's in his monster form. He's Heath's cousin, so again, he has flame 
flame hair, so I'm guessing Dr. Hyde is like a fire elemental or something. But I think his personality is very unique. His doll is also very cool. I think he's the second ever Monster High boy that was ever released. But I think his hair is cool. It's like this cool translucent plastic so it looks like real flame when you shine a light through it. He also has a tattoo on his face and a piercing. He has blue skin which is kind of weird. I don't really know how that makes sense but it makes him look more monsterish. But honestly Holt is kind of obnoxious and Jackson is super shy. They originally tried to set him up with Frankie but I'm glad they didn't because I don't think that would ever work out. And honestly I don't really love either of them but they're too iconic to not put in I would live for them so that's where I'm gonna put them. Up next we have Claude Wolf and I absolutely love Claude Wolf. I think he's such a great character. Not only is he Claudine's older brother but he's also dating Draculaura, Claudine's best friend and I think they make such a cute couple. When it comes to his design I really like his original design. It kind of screams like early to late 2000s to me. I just think it's very cute and he's super sweet to Draculaura. I like how protective he is of her. That's a very good quality about him. And he was actually released in a two-pack with Draculaura. I think it was like the date two-pack or something. I don't quite remember what it was called. But probably the best two-pack Monster High has ever released. Draculaura looks absolutely gorgeous in that two-pack. I know she's one of the most sought-after dolls. One of the most prized dolls ever. Because that design is just so beautiful. And I just like Claude a lot. That's all I have to say. He's a really good guy. I would totally live for Claude. So up next we have Deuce Gorgon and he has the honor of being the first Monster High boy that was ever released. And like Claude, he was released in a two pack except he was released with Cleo in the original run of Monster High. And if Claude and Draculaura were the best two pack ever to come out of Monster High, Deuce and Cleo were definitely the second best two pack or they might just be equal. I feel bad ranking them. <laughs> Maybe I'll make a video of ranking every single Monster High doll. Let me know if you'd be interested in that. I think that would take a lot of time but I have a lot to say about some of the dolls so maybe I would do it anyways. But back Back to Deuce, I love him so much, I love his original design. When I first saw the Monster High commercial, he kind of scared me, but I ended up liking him a lot. A lot of the boy characters, they usually give them a mohawk as a hairstyle because I guess they don't really know what else to do with their hair, but Deuce has the honor of saying that he was the first person to do that. He has his little snakes in the form of a mohawk, which makes me question the scales on the rest of his head. I'm like, do the snakes grow on just that one little part or did he shave the other ones off? It's kind of a dark thought to have, but I like Deuce, his personality is super chill. He's like a jock, but he's also Cleo's loving boyfriend, and he's super nice. He's kind of like a skater boy, which is super cool. And I just think it's funny that Cleo, who's like royalty, would end up with a guy like him. I think they have a really good dynamic going, and I love them as a couple a lot. And of course, I would live for Juice Gorgon. So finally, we've made it to the five original ghouls. And we're gonna start off with Cleo Denial. This original design is so gorgeous, so perfect, again in my eyes. That two pack with Deuce is just so iconic, and I would love to have an original Cleo. I think she's so beautiful. She starts off as a villain, but eventually she turns into one of the ghoul friends. I'm trying to think of words to say to express how much I love Cleo, but I just can't. I love her personality, how she's kind of mean, but she has a heart of gold. She also has a headband of gold and earrings of gold. And I know she's a lot of people's favorite character, and I think she deserves that. She's just so iconic, and I I really hope they do her justice in the new reboot, but of course, without a doubt, I would live for Cleo Denial. Up next, Gulia. What else can I say? Gulia's always been there for her friends. Love her so much. There's lots of dolls of Gulia that I actually really want. But I think Gulia is super underrated. Not that many people appreciate her as a character. But I think she's so cute. I love how she's Cleo's best friend. You wouldn't expect them to be best friends. But I think that makes it even more adorable. And Gulia just honestly deserves the whole world. And then the reboot, I'm gonna need them to bring back Gulia. So we need to start that movement. Laguna Blue. I know some of you have been waiting for Laguna Blue because she's such a popular character and it's deserved. Her original design is so stunning. I love that doll so much. I hope Mattel re-releases the original dolls because they're just so gorgeous and I want to collect them all this time and keep them forever. But Laguna is just so iconic. I remember seeing the original Monster High ads in like a Toys R Us ad or something in 2009 or 2010 when they first launched. And Laguna is one of the characters that immediately caught my eye, especially her character art. I think she's just so cute. I love her curly blonde hair. And I have a special place in my heart for sea creature monsters. But not only that, I love her personality. She's super optimistic, super energetic. She's always there for the rest of the ghouls. So Laguna Blue, I would live for you. Next, Claudine Wolf. I don't think I have to explain this at all. I'm just gonna do it. 
Actually, I'm gonna explain a little bit. I just love Claudine so much. Everything about her. One word to describe her is fierce. Her personality, I love. Her original design, I love. A lot of her dolls, I love. She's the fashionista of the group and it shows. She's just so gorgeous. And the word on the street is that in the new Monster High reboot for 2022, Claudine Wolf is gonna be the main character. And a lot of people are mad at that, but you can be mad because I think she deserves it. One of the best Monster High characters of all time. Love her so much. Okay, next, Draculaura. Okay, I'm just kidding. But Draculaura, undeniably the most popular Monster High character ever, point blank, period. period. And she deserves it. She's so cute. Her original doll, absolutely gorgeous. I think if I own that doll, I would value it more than my own life. That's a bit dramatic. But Draculaura is super dramatic. I love her pigtails. If you've been on my channel for a while, you know that my favorite hairstyle is pigtails. I think it's just so cute. And it makes sense that Draculaura has them. Also, I love that she's pink instead of red, which is like a typical color associated with the vampires. A lot of her dolls, I think Draculaura has the honor of having some of the best Monster High dolls ever. There's a lot of Monster High dolls of Dracula that are my absolute favorites. And I'm gonna say something controversial. I don't know if a lot of people are gonna disagree with this, but in the 2016 Monster High reboot, they made Dracula the main character. And I honestly think that was a bad choice. I think she works better as a side character, even though she's in the original ghouls and technically they're all main characters. I think that if they put her in the spotlight, it's a bit too much and it can be a bit too overwhelming. I just think it makes her that much more interesting that she's not the main character, but she's intriguing enough for a lot of people to absolutely love her and she's probably the best vampire character of all time i do not care what anybody has to say i will not be taking any other opinions on this there is only one right opinion and that is that draculaura is boss Finally, we come down to the ghoul that started it all, Frankie Stein. And a lot of people dislike Frankie, they think she's boring, but I don't really know why that is. I love Frankie a lot. Her original Monster High doll that was released was a cultural reset, and I'm not even kidding, Monster High changed the doll market forever. A lot of the doll lines these days are 100% inspired by Monster High. That's why every doll line has high at the end of it, but nobody can ever compare to the original, and the original in this case is Frankie Stein. She's absolutely gorgeous. A lot of her dolls are super pretty. I never owned a Frankie doll, which may be kind of hypocritical, but I was like nine and I had no money. But I really, really, really want to own an original Monster High Frankie. I think that design is so perfect. Frankie Stein is that ghoul. She will always be that ghoul. Nobody will ever replace her. There will never be anything else like the original Monster High launch. You just had to be there. And I would 1000 million percent live for Frankie Stein. I actually feel bad putting her at the very end, so I'm gonna put her in the top spot. That looks much better. So there you go guys, that's my official ranking of every single Monster High character ever. It's a lot more even than I thought it would be. Well actually not really. <laughs> I kind of knew it would end up like this. I love a lot of the characters. If you couldn't tell, I really love Monster High. It just holds such a special place in my heart. I'm not lying when I say Monster High raised me. It's one of the reasons I started drawing in the first place. I used to do fan arts of Monster High. I would redraw the box art because I thought it was super gorgeous. And it really influenced my style and art and the way I draw today. Also my development as just like a human being. I love Monster High so much. So I'm so happy it's making a comeback and I hope you guys found this interesting. Let me know what you think of my ranking. Where would you rank the characters? I was gonna make my own tier list, but I just googled this one and I found it. I'm gonna leave the link in the description to this tier list. It has a lot of characters on it. It took way longer than I thought it would, but I'm really interested to hear where you guys would rank the characters and what you think about Monster High overall. I'm also interested in what you guys think about me speaking in my videos. Does my voice shock you? Feel free to unsubscribe, but please don't. That was a joke. And lastly, thank all of you guys so much for your support. I'm really bad at words and I'm really bad at speaking, as if you couldn't tell by this video. I have a limited vocabulary, but I can never explain enough how much your guys' support means to me. Thank you all so much. Love you forever. And I hope to see you in my next video. So see you later and bye. <laughs>